Now we're just about ready to add our behaviors. One of the first things I'm going to do different this time is I'm going to actually go in and name each one of these buttons beforehand. So let's scroll back down a little bit. Remember our news button has an instance name on top of it called news underscore btn. Our instance names can't have any spaces so we use the underscore there. Now if I look at the weather and the sports and so on, the rest of the buttons need names as well. If we name them then the program won't give them silly names like button 27 or something like that. So let's click on the weather button and I'll just call it weather button. Weather underscore btn. We'll set up sports underscore btn. And then let's go back down to our other buttons. And we'll do the same thing for the buttons we got from the common library. Golf underscore btn. Football underscore btn. And of course basketball underscore btn. Now let's also set these buttons up where they're going to function in the timeline. I'm going to back out to 50% again so we can see everything. And let me bring my stage in here. Now I'm also going to need to see a few more layers. So let's just stretch our timeline down a little bit. And we'll go up and take a look at where we have these layers set up. First of all, I don't want the sports buttons to show up until the user actually clicks on the sports buttons. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create another sports area in between news and golf. I'm just going to pick the middle point. I'm going to put a keyframe there for a label, F6, and I'm going to name that sports. I'll hit the return key and I can see my label up there just like the other ones. Now let's drag the keyframe containing our sports buttons up here to the same frame where our sports label is located, right there. At that frame, that's where my three buttons are going to appear, and you can see now that before that, that area with the buttons will be blank. Now, of course, we want to get our news animation out of here as well, so let me go back to that frame where our sports buttons appear, and we can simply just click on this blank keyframe here and move it backwards, and that will just make sure that our news animation leaves the stage a little earlier. And now we're actually ready to set up the action script right onto the sports button. Now, remember what we need to do. The first thing we need to do is to put the playhead where we want the action script to be written. And we're going to put it with our other news button action script right up here on frame 1. So I'm going to move the playhead all the way back to frame 1 here. Next, I want to click on the button that we want to have trigger the action. So that would be the sports button. Let's go over to our code snippet window. And in the timeline navigation section, click to go to frame and stop. I'll double click on that and it will add our new code. There's our ActionScript code once again, and let me click right here in the ActionScript panel and we'll scroll up a little bit, and we can see the news button code, and below that it's added another block just like it with our new sports button code. Also notice that we have the same kind of long function here that's being called, but in the case of our sports button it's going to have a 2 at the end for both the function and the function call. So we just want to make sure everything matches. We can see that it picked up our sports button, and just like before, they've put in the number 5 as a placeholder. We'll select that 5, and we'll put in the sports label from up here. Remember to put that in quotes. Now we should have our second button set up. So let's go try it out. Okay, so there comes our first elements. Let's see if our news button still works. And this time we'll go down to the sports button and you can see now our other three buttons appear. So let's just set up the code for these ones as well. Now the first thing we want to do is just like before, put the playhead where we want the code to go. But remember, these buttons don't appear until this keyframe right here. So that's where I'm going to want to place my code. I'll get the actions panel out of the way. We'll click away from everything here for a second. And I'll just go to the golf button first. We've already given it a name. We've got our playhead sitting where we want. Let's go and add the code snippet. Go to and stop at frame. We can see that it's set up our golf button. Now we've got function three and function three. And let's just set up where it's supposed to go. This one's supposed to go to our golf label. 
We'll put that in quotes. Let's move things out of the way. And I'd like to go ahead and do my football button as well. Now, don't put it on the text field. We want it on the button behind the text field. I'll click on my code snippet window. Go to and stop at frame. We'll scroll down and change the five placeholder to football. And finally, we can set up our last button. Once again, I'll click on the bottom button there, go over to our code snippets window, go to frame and stop, and this one's going to go to our basketball label. That should do it. Let's test them all out. I'll go to my test movie. We'll click on our sports button and we can try out each one of the buttons. There's my golf. There's our football animation. And finally our basketball animation. So everything seems to be working just fine. Now we've got one more button out here that we need to worry about. That's our weather button. So let's get our actions panel out of the way and we'll see what we can do about setting that one up. We're going to have that button do something a little bit different. We're going to go to a website when you click it. So the first thing we'll want to do is, of course, move the playhead where we want the script to go. I'm going to move the playhead all the way back to frame one because we want our weather button to work right from the very beginning of the movie. I'll click on the weather button, just like the other ones, and I'll go over to my code snippet library. This time I'm going to go up to the actions panel. There's actually a lot of different actions you can choose. So you'll definitely want to try out some more on your own. We're going to try this one up here called click to go to a web page. I'll double click and just like before it's going to add the action script that we need. Now if we read this one it says clicking on the specified symbol instance loads the URL in a new browser window. Replace http www.adobe.com with whatever URL address you want and keep the quotation marks. So we'll just scroll down a little bit and since I don't really have a weather site to go to, let's just go to the Total Training website. And that's it. We should just go try it out. Let's test our movie. We'll go click on the weather button. And here comes our browser going right to the Total Training website. Now there's another way we can use that same behavior. Down here with the Contact Us button, we can have that directly go to your email program. Let's set that up real quick. I'm going to get my Actions panel out of the way first. And we're going to go down to the very beginning of our movie where we've got the Contact Us button along with the other welcome text. I can see that this is just normal, classic, static text, but of course we can convert it to a symbol just like anything else. I'll call that Contact button. And of course, we'll set the type to button. I'll leave the registration point where it is and click OK. Now, just because it's so easy, I'm going to double click on this button and we'll set up a quick overframe. I'll use my F6 keyboard shortcut to create a keyframe there. And on this new piece of text that we have, I'm just going to change the color maybe to a bright orange here. That'll give it a quick rollover. Back in scene one, I'm going to also give the button an instance name and that'll make our script read a little bit better. We'll call that contact underscore BTN. I'll just hit the enter key to make sure that that new name is entered and we can go over to our code snippet window and add the code. I'm going to use the same one, click to go to a web page. We'll add that right in and you can see that it's added the code right below the other code. We'll go down to where the URL is set, and this time I'll simply replace the entire URL with mail to colon, and then your email address. With that code entered, let's go try out our contact button. We can see the rollover works pretty nice, and when I click it, it should bring up your email client and go ahead and type your email address right in there. That way your users can contact you really easily. And there you can see how easy it is to add interactivity to your projects, both by building very simple buttons, reusing buttons that are already built into the program, and using the code snippet feature to have it write ActionScript for you. Be sure to save your changes.
In our next chapter, we're going to take a look at adding video to our project. So stick around.